Welcome to Revachol. Don't you welcome to Revachol me? My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in the city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. What he means is, fixation on the Revacholian nation makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Revachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here, that I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. You do make a cute couple, you know that? The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Whatever you say, officers. He smells of heavy motor oils and his breath of high tar content cigarettes, probably Astra Whites. <laughs> oh man, oh man, that's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. God damn. <laughs> Thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. He doesn't live in Martinez. Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. I'm not just racist. Look, I've read books, huh? The science of racial theory has all been proved, even if some people don't want to accept it. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Race is a simplistic means of social classification based on easily observed attributes, hunches, and pseudoscience. The lieutenant tries to remain impassive, but the slight arch of his eyebrow tells you that he's liking it. As arbitrary as any judgment, that doesn't make it less of a fact. We all have to use facts. Huh? Once you accept it, you'll gain the clarity of understanding. He is comfortable reciting these thoughts. He's spent quite a lot of time meditating on the subject. Open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe? Huh? When members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. The problem? The damn kips are showing a real good game lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other introduced species too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Cultural victory? What is this, then? It's what the Kips of Boogie Street are going for, right under our noses. And the others, too, on the radio. Heard any chanson lately? Heard any motetos or leader? No. Dominating culture is how they plan to win. They say so themselves. It's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers. 
of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birth place? You might end up with a new sub-race, with unknown characteristics leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the offspring. Don't push your luck, Runt. Looking for something, Runt? Come to tell me to fuck off? Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but the dock workers are on strike, so uh, it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. The strike? I'd have been at it for a while. A month. Two months, maybe. But this here is just the last week or so. Apples? Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Yeah, apples? I take it you had other questions? Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Race is a simplistic means of social classification based on easily observed attributes, hunches, and pseudoscience. So, lately we Occidentals have experienced an unfortunate downturn when members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority. They stop competing for resources. This concerns you, policemen, so you better be vigilant. The damn kits are showing up good lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other intruder species too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Cultural victory? What is this then? It's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birth place? You might end up with a new sub-race, with unknown characteristics leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the offspring. Good. If we, the evening people, pull together, we can form a bulwark against these troubled times. Root out the forces that seek to undermine the well-being of our people. Lieutenant Kitsuragi's stern expression remains unchanged. But you sense he can't be happy about this turn of events. I salute you, compatriot. Defenders of the evening lands have to stick together. Light up, brother. Word of those jungle spirits. Whoa, jackpot. Race. Cigarettes are a tool. Equip them in your health slot in your inventory. When you said before that you were down with racism, was it meant in earnest? Or were you just trying to win his confidence? I suppose that's a relief. Just be careful how often you avail yourself of this technique. A lie may be useful in the short term, but I have a way of catching up with you later. We know a lie, sire, and it didn't feel like one to us. He chooses to believe, though, for now. And one more thing. As you've seen, these sorts of attitudes are quite common in Martinez, so I expect this to happen again and again. I've had this conversation enough times in my life. From now on, I'm going to stay out of it. How you choose to respond is your business, but be careful. Now let's move on.
hauling cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. Nope, no, that's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast, you're a boxer, and you've climbed way too high up here. You could have died there. Shit, 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 shit. I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. Hey, hey, what happened? I understand. We can always come back when you are feeling better. It's just a clock after all. Just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. If she's such a working class woman, why isn't she working? Not all the time. Right now I'm browsing books. Even a working class woman needs something to read. It is. I know you are. Mm hmm. What with? What with? A lot of things. For example, my husband? No, he's not. I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where is this going, officer? Yes, but... I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. No. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. It's got to be something else then. No, absolutely not. Are you a policeman or a nanny? They are not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home. What? That's just... My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jambrock. There's nothing to worry about. They're almost grown up now anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny, she is turning 18 next month. But we shouldn't even be talking about them. Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you that they're not missing? That they're in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party? Did someone say party? You could use a party. Hunt it down. A killer party? What is it with you and Pulp Staples, my god? Please, no more talk about my daughters. They are fine. Okay, it must be asked then. What are you doing here? Why are you pursuing this? Is it a hunch? I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get ladies. It's better to indulge him at this point. I don't even have a cockatoo. And guess what? It's a trap. Never ever say what. Even if I had, it wouldn't be missing. Great. Nothing. 
Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? Or your heraldic bird? Wonderful. The store is open. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. Another comrade. Years of labor are pressing down on her shoulders. She deserves a hug for all the work she's done for mankind. You step in and close your arms around this foreign body, wandering astray in touch. There's a small movement beneath your hands. What is happening? She seems to be confused. Your hands are wrapped around her polyester coat. The fabric feels cold, moist from the sea nearby. The situation is oddly intimate. Your cheek is pressed against her shoulder. Her hand is trapped between your chest. Five seconds pass, and their passing seems so unimaginably long. Uh, what are you doing, officer? Fighting for it how? Oh. I guess it's better than nothing. Keep fighting on, my fellow comrade. Is there anything else I can help you? The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. There must be another way into the building. It's been a week and now they show up? You see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. It's the voice of someone who has something to hide, my liege. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat. He keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. That's definitely not his real name. No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinez's standards. What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait. Is someone else investigating the lynching? No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. 
a downy blanket of white to cover up the miserable poverty of the scene. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. It was my Sunday friend. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the grey sky, snow continues to pile on the neighboring window sills. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains. For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. There's snow gathering on his hair and on his shoulders. A speckle of white against the purple that hangs loose on his slender frame. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on. What's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments and a man can be in any of them. We'll just have to go in and see.
This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says, number 11. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. No reply. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says, number 11. The shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. The plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads, Kras Mazov. Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. The White Star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. Hold on a second. Is this why you broke in here? To find out whether you're Krasmazov? Except that Krasmazov is dead. He's been dead for 50 years now. Well, you both do seem to share an affinity for sideburns. But it seems like old Kras here didn't drink nearly as much as you. Ah, <sighs> very well. Let's look for identifying features then. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? All right, but here's the big thing. Krasmasov looks Samaran, and you don't. Yes, he does. Look at his eyes. Wasn't his mother a Samaran immigrant? Okay, you win. Be Krasmasov then, I don't care. Why are you so hell-bent on proving that you're Krasmasov anyway? I think you have misunderstood who he was, but if you say so. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youths still keep the ideology going, it seems. I suspect that's exactly what they are trying to do. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youths still keep the ideology going, it seems. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. Evening falls. The time has come to take the vow. The vows are blurred and flesh. Lower intestine? The term is metabolic and circulatory system. Fascism, Brota. Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Revachol's problems? Yes, them, but also women. Women, men of woo. You don't like them. They're insane. Their idiocy needs to be scrubbed off this world with rubbing alcohol. Woo men need to go back to the fucking kitchen. That's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important, but the main thing is that women need to know their place. Stomach truth. You're having a stomach truth. Because you've said the hard things that others won't say, the good things, 
you've said them many times. Okay, yes, let's call it that. That sounds much better. Traditionalism. You like the sound of that. You're going to keep your vus, right? Keep your vus, Brota. For the nation, smart. Best not to mention the woo-men too often. That's why you're the head and I am the stomach. Of course you are, Bruta. Of course. someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Did you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. She hasn't spoken to anyone for a while. Even her sentences feel rusty. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil. Right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? What was so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Ask away, policeman. People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. They probably just moved, or died, hopefully somewhere else. No one lives there. It's been empty for months. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. 
breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. The symbol of what now? Never heard of it. <laughs> Oh, I think he stuck something to do with all those stars around. That's what I. The lieutenant shakes his head. Oh, I think he's something to the symbol of what now? The cleaning lady shrugs, and the clash of ideas and atrocities are as far from her. Oh, I think he's something to do with all the the symbol of what now? Ah, all I know about politics is that it's brought us more harm than good. The artiste? Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still, she leaves an old lady. Oh, I think he's something. The symbol of what now? Huh, I thought Revachal was. Oh, I think he's something. The symbol of what now? Economy? Oh, I think he's something to do with the symbol of what now? I don't believe in it. She mumbles some kind of a response. The Piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Red dyed heavy fuel oil is only used in government vehicles. Or at least that's the idea. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her steering. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershaw. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? 
When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mona was here. We rarely see pigs round here though. Just union cads. And my name's not Mona, so... This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know, summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. Yeah? Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She means the opposite. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. Pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something. Soft, yet crinkly. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Seagai, the apricot suzerainty, and processed in Sir Le Clay into the apricot-flavoured chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Mmm, something about it is familiar. Just a racist. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of another planet or some ancient temple. Yes, from the height of antiquity. A long, long time ago. Millennia ago. On an island of time you can never return to. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead, it turns to liquid gold. For a moment, the world's store of precious metals seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. There is a movement next to you, the shuffle of a small coat, warm like the evening. But when you turn toward it, there's nothing there. Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger like a glow with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they used to create this artificial flavor have bonded tightly to the wrapper. Or is that just your memory filling the gaps until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts behind your closed eyes? Made of toffee, cream, and distance, you just had to take a dive. <laughs> 